It's like a highlight reel. Some might consider this my twilight, but depending how I might feel, I might continue on with my career for five light years. Critics can fly kites, yeah, welcome to my nightmare. Pressure's on, blood pressure racing. I calculate my next step, pacing. Don't know if I'll meet expectations. All I know is the world better get set. Trains in effect. Been in it since you had cassette decks taping. I'm I'm dominant, nigga. I put the eagle to your chest like Donovan. Aston Martins to big body trucks. Plastic surgeon, you could get bodied up. Doc Dre, Coxburn, still making heat rocks. Welcome to the aftermath. Time to detox. In rap history, there have been many sought-after unreleased albums. For example, we have albums like Tupac's One Nation, Easy es Temporary Insanity, N.W.A.'s Reunion album, Jewel Santana and Lil Wayne's I Can't Feel My Face, and Outkast's album Tim the Hard Way, just to name a few. While these are all desired by many people in their own ways, there is none that compare to the hype for Dr. Dre's Detox album. Today, I will chronicle the history behind this project. But before I get more into the video, I would first like to thank you guys for coming to see this. If you like the content, you guys should like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. Also, follow my Instagram too. That would be greatly appreciated. You guys can always reach out and just show me some love. It's all good. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Represent where you're from, especially if you're from the West Coast. Comment down below what unreleased album you would like me to talk about next. Without further ado, let's get into the video. The story of the Detox album takes us back to 2002. By this time, Dr. Dre had already cemented his legacy in the game. He was two albums in, with his first two albums selling millions of records. As a producer, he had already produced and made hits for some of the biggest artists in the game. People such as Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, Gwen Stefani, Tupac, Eazy E, Ice Cube, Busta Rhymes, and Nas to name a few. His label Aftermath was on fire with Eminem leading the charge and 50 Cent soon to follow at the beginning of 2003. 2002 would be the first time that the detox was talked about. In an interview with MTV in April of 2002, Dr. Dre would be interviewed about the album. His last album at the time, 2001, was released in November of 1999 and was originally supposed to be named either The Chronic 2000 or The Chronic 2001. I've seen both names used before. For those who don't know what a detox is, by definition, it's a process or period of time in which one abstains from or rids the body of toxic or unhealthy substances. With the detox, Dr. Dre said that he wasn't going to talk about smoking blunts and riding lowriders anymore. He felt like that subject matter was played out and was tired of hearing other people talk about it. He would be asked what he would rap about now and he would respond, I had to come up with something different but still keep it hardcore. So what I decided to do was make my album one story about one person and just do the record through a character's eyes. And everybody that appears on my album is going to be a character, so it's basically going to be a hip-hop musical. The storyline of the Detox album at this time was supposed to chronicle the life of a hitman. It was set to describe what this hitman goes through and how he lives his life. It was about his family and how he makes a living. It's also rumored that actor Denzel Washington was going to narrate this album. Both Dre and Denzel would appear in the 2001 movie Training Day. That would have been crazy if Denzel narrated this version of the Detox. At the time of this interview, the album was still 
still in its early stages, but Dre did say that the Detox would be his final album. He would further reveal that he had been blueprinting and getting ideas together since late 2001. The direction and the presentation of the album was something that he was still trying to figure out. He knew that he wanted this album to be over the top. As I said, this interview was done in April of 2002, and in this interview, Dre said that he expected to start working on the album that summer. This was only if he finished up other things that he was working on. This included finishing up songs for Eminem and upcoming albums for three artists on his Aftermath label, which were Truth Hurts, Shanta, and Rakim. Sadly, the Shanta and Rakim albums never came out. However, Truth Hurts did end up releasing her debut album, Truthfully Speaking, in June of 2002, peaking at number 5 on the US Billboard 200, selling 89,000 copies in its first week. If you know about the history of Aftermath, you would already be aware of the number of albums that have been shelved and went unreleased throughout its history. This is why the detox never coming out doesn't surprise a lot of people. But back in 2002, Dr. Dre would announce a release date for the detox with him saying that he expected it to be out by the summer of 2003. He further said that it was probably going to take him about a year to get it all together but that statement aged like milk pretty much y'all want to know a crazy fact i was born in late april of 2001 which makes me almost a one year old when the detox was announced in early april of 2002 as of today i'm currently 21 about to be 22 at the end of april and i'm about to graduate college almost as long as i've been on this earth this album has been anticipated which is insane pretty much but let that sink in, that's just crazy. But at the tail end of 2002, in December, Ice Cube would do an interview with MTV News where he revealed that the release date for Detox would be moved from the summer of 2003 to the end of 2003. The reason why was that Dre had started working on Ice Cube's unreleased album at the time that he was supposed to release on Aftermath. This album was slated to release in the summer of 2003, but by no surprise, this album ended up never coming out. The same thing happened with the Dr. Dre and Ice Cube album Helter Skelter. I've talked about the album before in my rap albums that were never released series, but I didn't go into deep detail. If you would like me to make a full on video about the album as I did for Detox, let me know in the comment section below. 2003 would come and there would be no detox album at this time dre had his hand in a lot of different things besides his own music he had artists on aftermath that he was working with and in 2003 50 cent would blow up and take over the game in an interview with double xl dre would reveal that he gave the cream of the detox crop to 50 cent for his debut album get rich or die trying which ended up releasing in february of 2003 dre would further revealed to XXL that he wanted to have 12 or 13 singles for Detox. He really wanted to take his time with the album. No filler tracks or fast forwarding, just straight bangers on every track. The calendar would flip to 2004 and at the beginning of this year, the Detox was scheduled to release in the fourth quarter of that year. Scott Storch would be interviewed by MTV News in January of that year about the album. He would be co-producing for the album and for those who don't know, previous to this he did co-produced for Dr. Dre and I can use the song Still Dre as an example. Scott would give the public some insight into what was going on behind the scenes. He described the album as the most advanced rap album musically and lyrically that we would probably ever have a chance to listen to. Him and Dre had built dozens of beds of beats, various innovative rhythms, and skeletons for numerous songs. These songs were set to be fleshed out, but no tracks had been titled at that time and no final cuts were chosen. According to Scott, when he was working with Dre, he usually made more than 100 records and then picked his favorites. A lot of personal material would appear on the album alongside a lot of hot tracks according to him as well. Scott would further explain that Dre was trying to top his album 2001. This is why he was spending so much time putting this album together. The final thing that Scott would reveal was that Eminem, 50 Cent, Snoop Dogg, and Nocturnal were slated to appear on the album. Newer names at the time like Lloyd Banks, Governor, and The Game were 
were also slated to make appearances. Then in May of 2004, Dre would do another interview with XXL and he said that he wanted to focus on the artist that he was working with at the time and didn't want to do another album. As much of a letdown as it might have been at the time, it does make sense. Both Eminem and 50 Cent were on fire and the game was up and coming. We all know how that went when he went on to release his debut album. But speaking of the game, while he was working on his debut album, Dr. Dre would do a verse and afterwards, he reportedly told the game that that was his last verse ever. No more Dre raps as he would say. Plans would change because on the song Higher from the documentary, Dre would tell people to look out for the detox. In November of 2004, Eminem would release his album Encore and on the track Encore Curtains Down, he would tell the listener to not worry because the detox album was coming and that he was going to make Dr. Dre do it. The game would be interviewed by MTV News in November of 2004 about detox and he would say, the thing was that when Dre decided to forget about detox, he was still in his artist molding mode. He was feeling like he just got Eve and Bust. He was real focused on my project. He was on some unselflessness. Like, I'ma put detox to the side. I ain't gonna do detox. Dre just fell back and wanted to work on his artist. After he got me out the way, Bust's album is almost wrapped. Eve is working her album. Dre is feeling vibrant. Dre got his groove back and he's ready to do the detox. In this same article, it's reported that a According to Interscope, the Detox album was now scheduled to release in the fall of 2005. However, the DOC said in an interview with Vlad TV that 2005 would be the year that he would work with Dr. Dre on the album. For those who don't know, the DOC has written a lot of stuff for Dre dating back to his album The Chronic. The DOC would say that in 2005, Dr. Dre wasn't ready. Him and Dre were doing songs with rapper Slim the Mobster, which according to the DOC were really good. They were working with a myriad of other young writers, but the direction of the detox was unclear at this point. 2006 would roll around and the big development in the detox story for this year was that Scratch Magazine would run a cover story about the album labeling it hip hop's unreleased masterpiece while hinting at it coming soon. Numerous Dr. Dre affiliated producers were interviewed about Detox where they detailed the on and off again sessions for the album. Producers such as High Tech, Denon Porter, Focus, Knott, and Mahogany. I'll leave a link to the Scratch article for those who want to read it and learn about the intricacies of the recording process of this album. Really interesting stuff to read about in my opinion. Denon Porter would be interviewed and questioned about how close the Detox was to being completed. He would respond that he didn't know, but he did know that Dre was focusing on it because he was now done with Busta Rhymes' album. I'm assuming that Denon is referring to Busta Rhymes' album, The Big Bang, which dropped in June of 2006. Producer Mahogany would provide further insight about the original concept of Detox. He described a conversation between him and Dr. Dre in which Dr. Dre stated that he wanted the Detox to play out like a movie. He wanted 16-bar jazz pieces and live instruments. The 19 98 movie Very Bad Things was noted to be an inspiration for the album. This is because Dr. Dre's last lead single at the time was the song Bad Intentions, which was on the soundtrack to the 2001 movie The Wash. He would co-star in the movie alongside Snoop Dogg. That was a party record and in the movie Very Bad Things, as described by Mahogany, four guys were having a bachelor party in Las Vegas doing drugs and partying when one of the girls that were partying with them got accidentally killed. Killed. Mahogany was thinking that the detox would open with one last big party with something tragic happening, which in tune would make Dr. Dre want to have a detox, which sets up the album. This cover story also talks about certain songs that ended up being released by other artists that at one point could have been on the detox. I recently made a very slept on video about Usher's iconic Confessions album. In that video, I broke down the history behind the song Throwback, which has production credits from Just Blaze. Just Blaze originally made the Throwback beat for Detox. He made the beat for Dre all the way back in 2001. Since the Detox was supposed to be Dr. Dre's final album, this is why on the sample of the song, it says, you're gonna want me back. When Dr. Dre deaded Detox, the beat was then given to Dr. Dre's artist, Brooklyn. After that didn't work out, the record eventually ended up in the hands of Usher. 
the producer Focus would reveal that the song Where I'm From, which appeared on the game's debut album, was intended for Detox. High Tech, who produced the song Running for the Game's documentary album, said that he had Detox in mind when he sent the track to Dr. Dre, but not when he was making the track. The song In the Club is another song that's noted, but the last song to be mentioned is the song The Setup by Obi Trice. Focus would reveal that at a time, this was supposed to be one of Dr. Dre's singles. As I said, there's a lot to unpack with this article, so I'm going to leave that link if you want to learn more. Now the year is 2007, and Dr. Dre would do an interview with the LA Times. He was asked about the Detox album, and he would say that he was really hoping to have it out by 2007, but the album had been pushed back again. The reasoning was that he had some other things to work on. He would add that he was still two or three tracks away from calling the album finished. The last thing he would say about the album in this interview was that the Detox would still be his last album because he called rap a young man's game. In another interview with Power 106, which is a radio station in Los Angeles, Dre would say that Bishop Lamont, who was his protege at the time, would be heavily featured on the album. This would be very similar to Snoop Dogg's role on The Chronic and Hitman's role on the 2001 album. With 2008 coming around, that would officially make it six years since the Detox was originally announced on MTV News in 2002. The update that we got on the Detox album this year was from an interview Snoop Dogg did with Rolling Stone. In this interview, Snoop Dogg said that the Detox was real and was still coming out. He started to have doubts himself, but he would visit Dre who played a ton of music for him. Snoop would further add that the album was finished and now it was up for Dre to go through all the songs and decide which songs would make the final cut. This same year, Dr. Dre would be interviewed by Billboard where he said that Detox was due to be released before the end of the year. He was aiming for November or December to release it. We were also given more insight behind the album with Dre saying that he was doing an entirely new thing with the drums which he described as incredible. He also revealed more guest appearances that were slated to be on the album from artists like Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, and Nas among others. So November and December of 2008 would come and yet again no album. This was explained in an interview with Billboard by Jimmy Iovine, who was the CEO of Interscope Records when this was going down. He revealed that Dr. Dre would go back to the studio in January of 2009 to record for the album. The return of Eminem, who took a break from music, was what prompted Dr. Dre to put Detox on hold. Instead of working on the Detox, he was now working on what went on to be Eminem's album Relapse, which ended up releasing in May of 2009. Early on in 2009, 2009 in February, we would see the leak of two tracks. These records were topless along with This Is Detox. The song was said to be obviously not mastered or fully recorded. It was also released without Dr. Dre's permission. Around this time period, Shady Aftermath were dealing with a lot of leaks. Eminem had to deal with leaks before his relapse album. But in May of that year, fans got the biggest break about Detox to that point. It was revealed that Dr. Dre was going to appear in a Dr. Pepper ad where he was going to debut new music. This was set to be a part of Dr. Pepper's newest campaign at the time. The ads were scheduled to air starting in June of 2009, which it did. In the background of the ad, you can faintly hear the song Stuff Popped Off. This track features T.I. and you can easily hear this track on YouTube. T.I. ended up including this track to his F The City Up mixtape years later in 2012. I'm really indifferent towards the track. I don't think that it's all that good, but that's just me looking at it in 2023 compared to me listening to it in 2009. It's not a bad song, but I also don't care to ever listen to it again. A song that did leak this year that is really good happens to be the song Could Have Been You. There are multiple versions of the song, I believe, because the features range from Dr. Dre, Bishop Lamont, and R. Kelly, and I believe that Bishop Lamont did the reference track for the song. The song, however, did end up appearing on 50 Cent's Before I Self Destruct album, which was released in November of 2009. The version of the song that appears on the album just features R. Kelly and has no Dre verse. There are leaks of different versions of the song with his verse on there, and he does have songwriting credits on the released version of the song. In 2009, there would be several tracks T.I. did with Dr. Dre that got leaked as well. Notably, the song This Is Detox would leak with T.I. and Kobe and this song is amazing. The beat is absolutely insane. Here's a clip of the song. 
I hit the ground running. Now the step lost. If nothing else, know this hustle you gon' respect, dawg. I get checked by the best. Don't get me upset. Cause I got more of what you saw that ain't been seen yet. So it's whatever, homie. Try me never, homie. Talking down on the crown. You know better, homie. This year, in 2009, we would get information about other people rumored to be working on the detox, which was Drake and Anthony Hamilton. The last tidbit about 2009 is that Dre would be interviewed by ABC News, where he talked about nearly working on detox for 10 years at this point. The interview was done in October, and Dre hoped to finish the album by the end of 2009, so the album could have released in 2010. Well, 2010 would be another big year in the progression toward getting a detox. Album. In April of that year, Jimmy Iovine announced that the song Under Pressure, which featured Jay-Z, would be the Detox's first single. This was then confirmed by Dr. Dre, but plans would soon change due to the song leaking that June. Dre ended up responding to the leak, saying that the leak was incomplete and that he was still working on the song. When the song was ready, we the public would hear it from him. You can easily hear this song on YouTube and once again, I'm not really feeling this track. I think that it very well could be because because the track is not finished but we never got a finished version of the song to my knowledge so i wouldn't know while i wasn't really feeling that song i do remember the hype around the song kush which ended up being dr dre's first single as a lead solo artist in almost a decade the song kush was looked upon to be the first official single for the detox album the song would officially release in november of 2010 peaking at number 34 on the Billboard Hot 100. The song featured Snoop Dogg and Akon, who definitely did their thing. I remember when this song came out and it was everywhere. The thing that stuck out to me as a kid was the music video. I will never forget the first time I saw it. I thought that it was the craziest thing ever. The original mannequin challenge. Unsurprisingly, the song leaked before its official release just a few days before it was set to drop. It was an unfinished older version of the track. The same day it leaked, Dr. Dre would do an interview talking about the leak. I see a finish line right now. I'm wrapping it up. I need about two or three more songs and hopefully I will start the mixing process process at the end of next month and from that point i am about 30 days out so i'm excited about it kush got leaked it was a version of it that got leaked i wasn't really happy about so we are gonna go in push it and put it out because everyone seems to like it you know i just thought like the content it's about weed smoking and i don't want people to think that's what my album is about this is actually the only song with that type of content in it before the official release of the song kush the instrumental was played in a tv commercial for Beats by Dre Power Beats. It was the commercial with Dr. Dre, Afeon Crockett, and LeBron James. The detox would be mentioned in the commercial with Afeon Crockett joking to Dre that instead of working out in the gym, he needed to be working on his upcoming album. It should be noted that Kendrick Lamar, who Dre was working with very closely at the time, dropped the song Look Out for the Detox in December of 2010. After the official release of Kush, we would see the official release of the song I Need a Doctor in February of 2011, which featured Eminem and Skylar Grey. This song would be huge with it peaking at number four on the Billboard Hot 100. On the cover art of the song, it would reference the detox, keeping up with the hospital theme, labeling it Detox Lab. This was another song that got leaked before its official release, but while I was doing research, I came across an interesting DJ Booth article. In the article, the writer of this article, Nathan, would say that he had an anonymous source at Interscope Records who told him that Interscope's plan was to act like I need a doctor was a leak. Why they would do something like this is to see how people would respond to the record and then either flip it into a official single like they ended up doing or bury it if everyone hated it. The writer further said that there may have been the option of pulling the song off of Detox and placing it on Eminem's recovery album. The anonymous source wasn't entirely sure if Interscope leaked I need a doctor on purpose or not but they wouldn't be surprised if they did. As I said, this is according to this article. Two months after the official release of I Need a Doctor, there was even more hope for Detox when the song Die Hard featuring Eminem was premiered on the Showtime series Fight Camp 360, Pacquiao vs. Mosley. 
Die Hard was reported to be the Detox's third single, and I feel like this song could have been huge as well. It really could have been an anthem, especially for sports. The beat is amazing, I really like Eminem's hook, and I think that Dr. Dre's verse is really good as well. For those who don't know, this was the first song that I played in the intro. The Detox was rumored to drop on 420 in April of 2011, but those rumors were shut down, and the single Die Hard was never officially released just like detox tracks like mr prescription and chillin were among the leaks that happened in 2011. sadly in november of that year dr dre would announce his hiatus from music while he was talking about his latest proteges at the time which were kendrick lamar and slim the mobster he mentioned that after finishing up with them he would quote unquote wrap it up for a minute he wanted to take a little bit of a break and enjoy some time with his family he added that by 2011 he had been working on music for for 27 years to that point the longest that he had ever been out of the studio in those 27 years was two weeks we all know that a man like dr dre couldn't stop making music entirely ever again which he notes and says that he couldn't do that because making music is like air to him it's just really crazy that this news came a year shy of it almost being a decade after detox was first revealed to be in the works by 2011 dr dre had his hands in a lot of different things. Beats by Dre was primarily what Dr. Dre was focusing on at the time, but he did, as he said, and finished up working with Kendrick Lamar, who went on to release his sophomore album, Good Kid, Mad City, in October of 2012. Dr. Dre would executive produce this album and he would feature on the street single for the album, which was The Recipe. An interesting thing about this track is that Scoop DeVille, who produced the record, would reveal in an interview with DJ Who Kid that the song was initially going to be on Detox, but Kendrick Lamar was the focus at the time. That would have been something because I really liked the song The Recipe and that would have been a great addition to the Detox. In 2012, 50 Cent would do an interview and be asked about Detox. He would say that it might only end up being an EP, which could have been no more than five or six songs. 50 Cent commented that he didn't know if Dr. Dre was excited to do the Detox now due to the success of Beats by Dre, as I mentioned. 50 Cent has a great quote where he says, Would you rather sell somebody a $10 CD or $300 headphones? This interview was released in late 2012, and he would say that the last time that he saw Dr. Dre, prior to that interview, Dre was in the studio. So I guess this break ended up not being that long. Reading up on this 50 Cent interview, I learned about another project from Dre that never came to fruition. It was supposed to be an instrumental album that Dr. Dre had been working on before 2010. Dr. Dre had been studying the planets and learning the personalities of each planet. The instrumental album was supposed to be his interpretation of what each planet sounds like. When Dr. Dre was questioned about the album, he insisted that he was serious about it, but like I said, this project was never released. This is where I wrap up the first part of the video where I talk about the detox sessions from 2002 to 2012. In the second part of the video, I'll discuss the events that took place from 2013 to present day. From what I've seen in 2013, we really didn't get any updates regarding Detox, but in 2014, it would be revealed by Marsha Ambrosius and Dewan Parker that Dre's next album wouldn't be called Detox and they both would end up being right. Marsha Ambrosius would first reveal this in an interview, but wouldn't reveal the title of this album. She did say that at the end of 2013, she went to Hawaii for a couple of weeks to work with the production team at Aftermath. She's a singer and songwriter for those who don't know, and she's worked with Dre in the past and still does to this day. Dewan Parker in a separate interview would say that the name Detox was scrapped and also would not reveal the new title for Dre's up coming album. I believe Dewan Parker is still an in-house producer for Aftermath Records and he would talk about the old sessions of the Detox. Something of note that he did reveal was that the song Get You Some by Busta Rhymes, which appeared on his Aftermath album The Big Bang in June of 2006, has a version that could have ended up on the Detox album. Now we get to 2015 and it would be revealed by Dre himself that he was working on the sound 
soundtrack to the at the time upcoming NWA movie. Ice Cube would do an interview with Rise and Grind Morning Show, which has now been deleted. In this interview, Ice Cube would say that Dre would not only be working on the soundtrack to the movie, but he was also set to drop his third studio album. He referred to this as something that everybody has been waiting for. Well, Cube is right because Dre's third album, Compton, would be released in August of 2015. Compton ended up peaking at number two on the Billboard 200, selling 295,000 albums in its first week. After the release of Compton, things got quiet regarding Detox. Once again, Dre was focused on other things rather than putting out music. However, in 2021, hype for the album would be renewed when producer Dem Joints would post a picture of him in the studio with Dr. Dre and several other people with the caption, we back. The hashtag that he used for this post was hashtag Detox21 for 2021. This stirred up a buzz, but Detox ended up not releasing this year. We did end up getting new music from Dr. Dre this year with the release of Grand Theft Auto Online, The Contract, which was released in December of that year. This project would get an official release on DSPs in February of 2022. This project dropped alongside a new DLC for GTA 5's online mode. The DLC featured the return of one of the story mode's protagonist, Franklin. In the DLC, your character and Franklin team up together to help retrieve Dr. Dre's stolen phone and USBs, which all have copies of a plethora of unreleased tracks made by Dre himself. A funny moment in the DLC is when the character Lamar finds out that Dr. Dre lost his stuff, and he alludes to the detox. The last big news that we have to this date about detox is when Snoop Dogg posted pictures with him and Dre in the studio, and one of the pictures in the background you can see a whiteboard and on the whiteboard you see detox written on it with the potential track list that leaves us with current day in 2023 where we still don't have the album it has now been over two decades since the album has first been announced there are people still clamoring for this album but personally i feel like dre should just let it be we know that there are songs that are finished and 10 times more songs that are unfinished even though I feel like Dre should not drop Detox, I still would be interested in listening to the music from those Detox sessions throughout the years, particularly from 2002 to 2010. I'm not really interested in hearing a newer version of Detox. It's a shame because we all know that it exists because so many different people have worked on it. Legendary producer DJ Quick would say this in an interview in 2018. I worked on Detox. When we were doing Truth Hurts, there's times where me and Dre had what we call thinking sessions. Hypothesis only, not programming. Just in theory, Detox is a super smart piece of music, but it's all music, you know what I mean? That's what could be the stumbling block for the record because it's all music and you got so many people to please. If you're off with one, it won't be a classic record. So I understand Dre's concern about putting it out, but some of the tracks I heard, oh my God, get the F out of here. Sound wise, it was going to be better than Chronic 2001 and idea wise. A decade before he said this, DJ Quick would do an interview in 2008 about the album and he would reveal that Dr. Dre was getting piano lessons from Burt Bacharach, who's regarded as one of the greatest musical composers and songwriters of his time. Dr. Dre was learning to reinterpret what DJ Quick describes as Frederick Chopin symphony type music. Frederick Chopin was a famous piano and composer back in the 19th century. DJ Quick would also say that Dr. Dre had over 400 songs back in 2008 and he had heard almost 60 of them. Dre had so much music according to DJ Quick that he could have made six or seven detox records if he wanted. Another person who has talked about their time working on Detox would be Drake. Lil Wayne on Drake's song Ransom Freestyle that released in 2008 would say that him and Drake wrote for the Detox album. Drake would end up talking about his time working with Dr. Dre in the book The Song Machine Inside the Hit Factory which was published in 2015. About his experience, Drake would say, It was some of the most strenuous militant stuff I've ever done, but no usable songs came out of it. When I think of how he worked it's no wonder he didn't get anything out of it. It was just writers in a room churning out 
product all day. The book, The Song Machine Inside the Hit Factory was written by John Seabrook. John would end up getting interviewed by DJ Booth in 2018, where he was asked about Drake working on Detox. He didn't provide any specific years, but did say that Drake was around 19 when he was working on Detox. The information in this interview with DJ Booth pretty much matches up with Drake's account of what happened. Drake would do an interview with DJ Semtex and he would say, it kind of all came to an end when Dre brought me into his office. He's like, man, you're doing really good work. He gave me a $10,000 check. It was the most money I had ever gotten in my life. I got the money, flew my girl down to LA. It was just a joyous moment. I had missed studio or I had done something wrong. I had let my mind deviate from work and I missed something. Next thing I know, I was sent home and that was kind of it. It was a big life lesson for me. Akon is another person who Dr. Dre worked with throughout the years on Detox. Akon has talked about his experiences working on the project multiple times and has even previewed some material that could have ended up on the Detox. He would go on Instagram live with DJ Who Kid and play him an exclusive track which is referred to as Back Again. The song is probably my favorite thing that I've heard from the Detox sessions throughout the years. We only get the hook of the song which is done by Akon and I'll play a snippet so you can hear it. Now you understand where I'm coming from. I actually found out that Akon used the same hook on a song that he did in 2005 called Back Again with an artist by the name of K.I. Just look up Akon Back Again on YouTube and you'll find it. Really dope song as well, but obviously with a different beat. It's no shocker that Dr. Dre and Akon work well together because Akon would feature on the song Kush where he did a phenomenal job. When speaking about Detox and why it never came out, Akon credits this to to Dr. Dre being a perfectionist. He also added that he thinks that Dre had fear of releasing the album and then not going number one. Dr. Dre released Compton and that didn't go number one, but I guarantee you if he released Detox instead, he would have gone number one, especially when he released Kush and I Need a Doctor back in the day. But speaking of the Compton album, Akon says that he felt that the album was a test to see how the world was going to perceive him. Akon thinks that if Dre had followed up Compton with Detox, then he would have made a killing. But these are just three different accounts from three different people that have worked on the Detox album. There are countless of other people who have worked on this album throughout the years, so we would be here all day if I went through each and every one. By now, you guys get the point. There are multiple reasons why this album never came out. The four main reasons that I've come across are Dre being a perfectionist that leaks over the years, Dre doing big things outside of music, and Dr. Dre prioritizing work on other projects instead of the detox. These are the four main reasons that you can pull from different accounts of people who have worked on the detox. We all know that the music is there, but Dr. Dre just never pulled the trigger. This pretty much wraps up the video though. I just broke down the history behind this unreleased album from 2002 to present day. I definitely think that this might be one of, if not the most detailed breakdowns of this project and one of the most detailed videos that I've ever done. For that alone, you gotta support Support your boy because this video took me forever to do. All in all, let me know what you guys thought of the video. I love you guys with all my heart. Peace.